Hello, internet friends and family. It's me, Prepper Us, and I'm here today to talk about my EDC first aid trauma kits based on my good buddy who is a hazmat officer and the components that he puts in his kit and he keeps it in the glove box of his truck. And that's where I keep mine because it's so small and compact. Now, I have to mention one thing. There's a lot of stuff in here that you may not be familiar with. So definitely research all the items I'm going to show you and learn how to use them. Because if you don't, you could actually kill somebody instead of saving their life. That wouldn't look very good on the news, would it? Whatever, whatever. What's in the bag, Russ? What's in the bag? God, you people. Here, here's everything that's in the bag. Let's do a 360 on this trauma kit. It's got nice loops all over it for stuffing tools in. Also got these D-rings for hanging extra accoutrements on there. And it's got horizontal and vertical loops for putting on your belt or your backpack or your purse. I put this paracord number on here because I wanted the thing to have a handle. And I also wanted it to be really quick and easy to stick it to my jorts. And it comes off real quick, so I'm ready to go and start working on somebody. And I could also just carry it around with my little handle, because I like convenience. All right, I'm going to just start taking stuff out. And while I am, I want to explain to you that I also call this the bleeding and breathing bag, because those are the two main killers of people. And you got the 90-second rule, which is basically in 90 seconds, you can bleed out and die. And in 90 seconds, if you ain't breathing, your brain goes dead. So these, like, all these tools and stuff are in here for, are mostly for that. And there's a few extra things in there for other like trauma situations and basic first aid. But let's go ahead and get started with the number one tool in the world, a knife. And I love this knife. It's heavy duty and it's like thick steel and super sharp. I didn't have to sharpen it. And it's great for cutting belt, like, you know, seat belts off somebody or just, it's always good to have a knife in any situation, but I mostly like it for this because it's got scissors and these are like heavy duty shears, man. They can cut through like canvas and everything and it can cut people's clothes off. I like cutting people's clothes off. This is a whistle calling attention. Help. This is another kind of thing where it's like great for just lighting up the situation. And it's a super bright light. I love these lights, but it's also got this little flashing number and to bring people to help me. Cause when you're working on somebody, it's great. If you can get help, right? Come help. This is the world's tiniest little, um, tear proof waterproof first aid manual it's got pretty much anything you would need for trauma first aid and it's got little pictures and uh, tons of easily to digest quickly digest situational stuff lots of info on the front and the back and it's just so thin and nice these are sutures for clamping off arteries. If you can see them, clamp them off. Keep them from bleeding. Bleeding's bad. These are uh, reading glasses for getting close up on someone. They're really digging there and find that artery. And it's also good for reading that little tiny map. Or not map. That little uh, first aid thing I had out. Uh, alcohol band-aids. They just fit in there. This is sea locks. This is blood clotting granules and it comes with an applicator that jams into puncture wounds and you just squirt those grains in there to quit bleeding. This is a headlamp because you need two hands to work on people. Put it on. It's a broad beam lamp. I love it. It's one of my favorite flashlights and I use it all the time. This is the best tourniquet I could find. It's a rat's and it goes on real quick and three loops around and it's stuck in this little med container. I got nothing more than just uh, charcoal for food poisoning and aspirin for heart attacks, chew on them and swallow. And then this is a glucose tab for low blood sugar people make them feel better. This is cat here this is tape for tape on wounds this is a pulse oximeter it goes on your fingertip or your toes and it shows you blood oxygen levels and your heart rate great for making sure your tourniquet's tight enough to stop the bleeding 
This is tampon. Shove it in the puncture wounds. This is a compression decompression needle. It's a big needle, and it jams into your chest, and it will help with like uh, lung puncture wounds, so you can breathe. This is the Sharpie, and I like this brand because it writes on grease and wet and everything. This is a nose trumpet because if your throat gets busted up, you shove it down their nose so they can breathe because breathing's important. This is the Mylar blanket for someone's in shock. This is an Israeli bandage. It's a compression bandage. It's probably one of the best. They used it in wars and stuff. It's great for, you know, just bleeding. This also is great to use with it. It's nothing more than compressed gauze, but you get four yards of it in there. Look how tiny for four yards. That's purified water for cleaning out your eyes in case you get a chemical burn or like dust or sand or glass. This is a chest seal twin pack. You always got to buy the twin pack because you need two of them. If you get a puncture wound in your lung, like a bullet shot or something, you got to cover up the front and the back, the exit hole as well, so people can breathe. These are nitrile gloves for your protection, and these are called finger cots. And they're like if you cut your finger or something, you put them over them. One's cloth, the other one is silicone, and it, it helps from just hurting. Ta da! And always remember that first aid starts with you first. That's why I put this first aid patch on the front of my kit, so in case somebody finds it, they can save my ass. Anyhow, I went through the grueling process of linking to each and every item into the description below. I'm Prepper Russ. I guess.